Welcome to the second part of the Congo River Rapids video. If you've not seen part one, there's a link here and also in the description. Today we'll continue with some of the more bizarre fish, including the blind eels, blind catfish, and I wanted to give an update on the all gray, all the time Congo tank we built. Spiny eels are extremely successful in the Congo. There are 13 species in the Congo River, and of course many more in Lake Tanganyika. The problem is that the species in the rapids are extremely difficult to catch. And we usually see the same species from the Malebo Pool must assemble as Grosshofi in the hobby, because they occur in the shallow waters upstream. This giraffe pattern species has no name yet, and it's occasionally mixed in with them. The Congo eels won't win a beauty contest, but they're still extremely interesting. Of the benthic or deep water species that have eyes, my favorite is Mastasemblus robertsi. It is a massive, high-bodied eel that can get quite large and sort of exemplifies the dominant slate-gray color of the bedrock substrate in the rapids. Just like Steatocranus, Teleogramma, and many of the Momirids, they blend in perfectly. Once established in the aquarium, spiny eels often become quite habituated and will start to come out during feeding time, even taking food from your hand. The group of five Robertsi gets along well, but they are in a very large aquarium where they can avoid each other. Some of them are over 30 centimeters long now, but get bullied by a single tiny black eel that I assume must be Mustasemblos niger. And while I love their non-color, these eels are not going to the gray tank, because I'm still hoping to get a really rare species to add in there later. Once spiny eels are in a tank, getting them out is very difficult, and would likely involve removing every rock and even the substrate. In even deeper water, vision seems pointless, and maybe the crevices and sand blasted by the currents may damage sensitive eyes, so the Congo has a large number of blind and eyeless fish. Blind fish usually occur in three types of habitats. The obvious one is caves, but there are also blind fish that live in the aquifers and never see the surface of their habitat. Those species have been caught only by chance when people brought them up from wells dug for drinking water. The third are blind fish that occur in deep water, and this is the case in the Congo. Of the four known blind spider eels, must assemble as is the most common. As young fish, they still show simple pin eyes that can tell light and shadow, but as they get older, the eyes are covered in layers of skin, and older fish develop massive heads that look like they are wearing a helmet. To me, this is one of the coolest freshwater fish, and once settled in, these otherwise cryptic fish will often come out to feed. I found that spiny eels may take time to eat dry food, but eventually take bug bites or similar pellets. Until then, they prefer frozen bloodworm, mysis, brine shrimp, or live foods such as daphnia. Cynodontis are of course found everywhere in the rapids. In the shallows, Cynodontis brichardi is the most common species, along with juveniles of Cynodontis decorus and angelicus. Their large adults are deeper, in stronger current, alongside Cynodontis longirostris, which is the largest Cynodontis in the Congo rapids. In the aquarium, the large synodontis are not always easy to keep, especially in groups. Groups of adult synodontis angelicus or longirostris need huge aquaria, because they chase and bite each other, which is why I like synodontis brichardi. They are much smaller as adults and not so hard on each other. One of the really rare species from the rapids is synodontis pulcher. For some reason, the Congo does produce some wild albino fish of many species, most commonly seen are African lungfish and polypterus, but over the past 30 years I've also kept several different species of Momirids and at least five Synodontis species. So this is an albino Synodontis from the Malebo pool. The Synos here are more short-bodied and not so well adapted to life in the rapids. The typical species for this area are Nigroventris, Alberti, Contractus and Pleurops. But my favorite are the closely related species that have a sucker mouth to feed on the substrate in the rapids. The coolest are Eucalyptus gunteri, which reaches sizes of over 30 centimeters and have a very large sucker mouth. Very much like the South American Astroblepus. By real foulfish standards, these are some of the more difficult catfish to keep in the aquarium, just like the Astroblepus or some of the Asian Exostoma catfish. Strong current, oxygen saturation, and plenty of food are required to keep these odd catfish in the aquarium, but at least they like warm water and do not require a chiller like the Asian or South American ones. 
I've never seen large adults of these catfish in captivity, so it would be a really spectacular aquarium with what is likely a very challenging fish. Chiloglanus are much smaller and many species occur throughout western central Africa. In the deep water of the Congo Rapids, there are several species of blind Chiloglanus. These seem to max out at around 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters. Their body is extremely compressed, like many of the rapids fish we are looking at today. This species is extremely challenging to keep and requires massive amounts of food considering its small size, very high oxygen saturation and low nitrate levels. Remember that the strong current also means the fish expend more energy and require accordingly greater quantities of food, filter cleanings and water changes. These were described this year as Chiloglanus kintsuka. Eel catfish related to Clarius are also successful in the Congo. The most common are Chanalavis apus, which is found in shallow water in the Malibo pool. This catfish is found with both eyes as well as individuals with pin eyes and even completely blind. In the aquarium these fish won't hold still and like Clarius tend to bother tank mates at night but they are fascinating to watch. Their mouth is relatively small but I found that keeping them with cichlids has rarely worked out for either of them. Eel catfish are excellent jumpers. After all Clarius are known as the walking catfish and with the cover left open a tank full of newly arrived Chanalabis can empty itself out in one night. The deep crevices are home to several genera of eel-shaped catfish that are perfectly suited for life in the narrow and dark spaces. Some species, such as Gymnolabis nopes, are completely blind and tiny, while others have rudimentary pin eyes, such as these Platyalabis tehoni. In the aquarium they are voracious feeders, but have very small mouths, so they don't seem to harm tank mates, and the fish from the rapids are less nervous about the nocturnal activity of these fish. Unfortunately, these strange catfish are so rarely exported that we know almost nothing about them. My first import of tiny Platia labis became instant favorites in our fish room because they feed like a group of rushed chipmunks and disappear under the rocks the moment that there is no food left. The young fish showed no aggression towards each other and may share a cave on occasion, even with the eels. I also got one large, more than 25 cm long Platia labis. At this size, it's completely blind, with thick layers of fleshy padding growing over the eyes. After some weeks in the aquarium, this bizarre catfish now comes out to feed with the lights off and no motion in front of the aquarium. Despite being blind, many cave and benthic fish have the ability to see light and shadow, making it tricky to film them in the aquarium. The Platia labis does not seem to harm other fish in the tank despite its size, but it tunnels under every rock to create potential hiding spaces. As the little ones grew to 15 centimeters, they are now all together in the Grey Congo tank. So I've been trying to find a mix of grey fish for a tank that has grey rocks, just like the Congo. These rocks are a local shale, but they have the same color as the basalt in the Congo. Only I found it hard to simulate the layer of fine debris. I tried this with clay that will settle on the rocks and stick there for a while, but the sucker-mouthed catfish like the Eucalyptus and the Synodontis will eventually get it back into the water column and back into the filter. For now, this 2-meter aquarium has Eucalyptus, Synodontis, Platyalabis, Teleogramma depressum and Steatocranus tenanti, which have grown the huge chins since I showed them here last year, and I'm experimenting to find a set of characins that I like. For now, there are some Bruconathiops bolengeri and Bruconathiops isuxi, but I'm still hoping to find something more unusual. It's mostly grey fish, so you can see the overall theme. If you like this video, please like and share the link and subscribe to this channel. The channel is slowly approaching 30,000 subscribers and maybe this is gonna happen in 2026.